Very simply put, in just one sentence, freeze drying is just removing water from food as gently as possible. So let's talk about a step-by-step -step process on what's happening when you're freeze drying. So step one, we are going to freeze our food. Once the food is frozen and there's ice crystals in it, we need to go ahead and drop the pressure inside the food chamber. So step two is reduce pressure. So we now need to gently heat the food. The last step is just simply heat it. The most important step is obviously eating the food. So we'll throw that in there. Let's go over all these in a little bit more detail. So step one is to freeze the food. When we freeze the food, we're actually gonna want larger ice crystals rather than smaller ice crystals when we're freezing it down. I'll explain why that is. So let's start with, let's say a piece of chicken here. And we freeze it down and we form a ton of ice crystals inside the food. We're gonna do ice cubes as ice crystals. So we need to freeze the food in order to lock the food into shape. Think of the difference between a dried banana versus a freeze-dried banana. So a dried banana is going to collapse as you dry it. Uh, same thing with jerky. You take a piece of meat and you, you know, jerky it, it's going to collapse as you boil the water off. But in the case of freeze-drying, we try to freeze it first so that way we lock that shape uh, into place. The reason why we want larger ice crystals rather than smaller ice crystals is imagine there's a cell here. If we are trying to take a perfectly preserved cell and we're trying to get the water out of it, this cell membrane is still intact. Uh, the water doesn't want to leave because this is a phospholipid bilayer. Anyways, it, doesn't, it just doesn't want to leave. When we take and form ice crystals slowly, what it does is it actually fractures this cell membrane. That will help facilitate water you know, evaporating or in this case sublimating out of the cells. So that's what's going on at the cellular level. We're also, you know, all the little cells in here, because we're locking everything into place and we're doing this whole process super gently, we're also preserving a lot of the nutrients and a lot of the proteins that are in these cells. Now that the water is frozen inside the food, how do we actually get the water out of the food? Step two is reduce the pressure. We reduce the pressure by putting this piece of food into a vacuum chamber. The reason why we want to reduce the pressure in here, we can actually get water to boil at lower temperatures than you know, even 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The syringe is a good example of what's going on inside this vacuum chamber. So by pulling the plunger back, we are reducing the pressure inside this chamber. And because the pressure is reduced, even though the water is at room temperature, it's still going to boil. So to explain this a little bit better, I'm going to draw a poor representation of the triple point graph. On this graph, we've got pressure on this side and temperature on this side. We've got lower temperature over here, higher temperature over here. So everything over here is ice. As we reduce the temperature, we're going to turn to ice. Everything in here is liquid. And then everything over here is gas. This is the triple point. Generally, at normal pressure, you cannot skip the liquid phase. You have to go from ice to liquid to gas or from gas to liquid to ice. But if we reduce the pressure enough over here, we can actually go from the solid phase straight to the gaseous phase and we don't have to pass through the liquid phase. And that's what you're trying to do inside this food. You're trying to get ice to turn straight into gas without passing through the liquid phase. If you pass through the liquid phase, it's going to destroy the structure of the food. So you're gonna get food that collapses and it doesn't look good and you lose nutrition if you pass through the liquid phase. So that brings us to step three, which is to gently heat the food. This process of going straight from ice to gas is called sublimation. If you hear the term lipolization, that is the term specific for food. Either way, if you say sublimation or lipolization, you're talking about the same thing, but lipolization is specifically for food. So in this vacuum chamber, we actually have heat pads. And these heat pads are going to put off heat into the food. By heating the food very gently, we're able to liberate all the water out of the food. The water is actually going to stick to the outside of the chamber in the form of ice. Once all this water is gone, or all of this ice is gone, we're actually going to be left with about 1%, sometimes 2% water content. It's really low. In general, freeze drying is gonna easily reduce you below 4% water content, but oftentimes in the literature, you know, we see like, you know, 1% water content in most foods. So let's talk about eutetic temperature. If you are above this, you can get into the eutetic temperature. If we heat the food too quickly, we can actually turn these ice crystals to liquid 
even though we're below pressure. The goal with freeze drying is to get as close to the eutetic temperature as possible without going over it. So that way we have faster cycles, but we can't go over that eutetic temperature because if we do, we're gonna destroy the food. And that brings us to step four, which is obviously, you know, eat the food. And sometimes when you're eating the food, you know, it might be 30 years plus old. When you freeze dry food, again, you are reducing the water content in the food below 1%. If you're able to do that, there's nothing that's going to grow inside the food. And if we put the food inside of an oxygen-free environment, we're not going to destroy any of the nutrients inside of the food. Freeze drying, you're usually left with about 90% nutrient content. So freeze drying is by far one of the most gentle, uh, best ways to preserve food for a very long time. And it's a way of preserving food that you wouldn't normally be able to preserve. Think of meat, for example, like you're not gonna be able to store, you know, jerky for 30 years, but you know, freeze drying, you can do this at home and you're gonna be able to store meat for 30 years very easily. Thanks for watching. We tried to go a little bit more in depth on this video to give you a little bit deeper of an understanding on what's going on. But if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us. If you want a really simplified version of this video to show your friends, there's a link in the description for another video about that. In, in, oh man, I, hang on. I don't know, I'm having a brain fart. Like I have no idea how to explain this. <laughs> Auto says they eat your food. <laughs> <laughs> Does that look okay? You're trying to get gas. <laughs> dry is we're, we're, we're. How do I do that? How do I explain that? Hopefully this helps. If thanks for watching, and I hope you have. Thanks for watching, and I hope you liked. Thanks for watching, and I hope that. Thanks for watching, and I hope that helps. We tried to. It's just it's just <laughs> the ending. I think it was it. Hopefully.